minutes to go. You're doing great. This one. You're almost done. The first reaction was, wow, this looks like something from Star Wars. Very quickly, it became apparent that this could change the way we treat patients. Now, we could actually treat formerly untreatable conditions. It's the idea that one should do surgery in the least destructive way possible. Cyberknife in itself represents one of the major advances in medicine over the last 50 years. The Cyberknife was invented at Stanford by John Adler. John studied with Lars Lexell in Sweden, who introduced the invention of the Gamma Knife to neurosurgery. I was in Stockholm and caught up under the spell of Lars Lexell, and it seemed to me that Lexell was describing the future of much of neurosurgery, and I just couldn't get it out of my head. This drawing was actually made in 1988 it tried to depict my ideas for the core technologies that would eventually become the Cyberknife. The challenges of bringing a team together and finding the money to make it real was just a huge, huge challenge. Perhaps most lucky of all was the ready proximity of people who knew how to make linear accelerators. The linear accelerator industry is based here in Silicon Valley, and it's an example of Stanford's seminal role in creating modern radiotherapy. This drawing was done in 1990. At this point, I decided that I had a small little linear accelerator that I could attach to the robot, and it was clear that this was gonna be the final solution in terms of aiming the linear accelerator. So this device right here is the heart of a linear accelerator. Electrons are injected at one end, and at the other end, they can achieve the speed of light before hitting a tungsten target. And this basic concept was created at Stanford. At that point in time, we had been doing radial surgery using a stereotactic head frame system, similar to the gamma knife system in that it required rigid fixation and a frame placement on our patients. Instead of the frame which anchored to the patient's skull, I realized that with modern technology, we would be able to target tissue anywhere in the body with computerized image correlation. One of the advantages that the CyberKnife has over conventional radiation is that it's very precise. It has accuracy of less than a millimeter of error when delivering radiation. We can see the tumor better with improved imaging study, and we can also be able to track the tumor better. And because of that, we spare more of the normal tissue, and that gives us the ability to give more intense radiation treatment over a shorter period of time which really has revolutionized the way we treat the patient. The standard radiation oncology treatment is six, seven, eight weeks of treatment. Now the CyberKnife showed that you could reduce these big, long radiation treatments to literally a matter of a day or a few days. It has the versatility of being able to treat structures outside the brain. And so you can treat the spine and also outside the central nervous system, you can treat prostate, lung, abdominal, and even cardiac problems. The limits of the CyberKnife, I don't think, have been really fully pushed. The most cutting edge treatments on the horizon are treatments of things such as depression, back pain, obsessive compulsive disorders, and then certainly to make the leap even beyond the realm of neurosciences. The risk to innovate, the risk to, to think outside of the box, it's these sorts of thought processes to think beyond really what is currently available that really change the world. I think the CyberKnife has shown us that it isn't just the magical nature of radiation itself, it's the precision with which that radiation is administered. So what we've done is we've taken Marie Curie's magical energy source and we've made it precise for the modern world and in doing so I think made something very, very special and almost magical in its own way.